In this lesson, we'll learn about the cutting conditions. Cutting conditions are like cutting presets. They can be used to set the plotter to the perfect condition for cutting specific types of material. For instance, condition 1 may be set for cutting high-performance vinyl with normal cut settings. Condition 2 may be configured for cutting reflective vinyl, which may need a higher force. Condition 3 may be configured to cut sandblast resist material that may need a slower speed. Condition 4 may be for pen plotting, and so forth. The settings within a cutting condition include the force, speed, acceleration, the type of blade that's to be used, and other settings. The FC8600 has a total of eight cutting conditions. What we will cover is first how to easily adjust the current condition. Then we'll cover how to easily switch between conditions. And finally, we'll show how each condition can be configured to cut the different types of media you may be using. Let's first go over how to adjust a cutting condition. Let's set up this current condition to cut through high performance vinyl. To accomplish this, press the condition key. This will switch to this screen that shows the current condition number and the settings for that condition. These settings include tool, speed, force, acceleration, and other more advanced settings. The first setting displays the current cutting condition number. We'll discuss switching conditions later in this lesson, but choosing this option will enable us to switch between conditions. The second option shows the tool or blade type to be used for the current condition, in this case condition 1. The screen shows us that we need to press the 2 key to change the tool type. To change the blade type, first determine which blade tool is being used. The easiest way to do this is to look at the container that your blade came in. This will indicate the blade type number that can be used for the condition. This menu shown here is typical of how the other condition settings are adjusted. For instance, to change the blade type, simply press the up arrow or down arrow key to select the blade type. In this case, we will be using the CB09U blade. We can scroll up the list to find that blade type, which is actually the next choice. Once the blade type is located, we can either press enter, which accepts the new blade type, or press the left arrow key to cancel out of this menu altogether. Keep in mind that when the left arrow key is chosen, the cutter will discard the new selection and will return to the previous menu. In this case, we want to accept the new blade type, so we can press enter. This will return to the previous condition menu. To set the speed, press the 3 key. In this menu, notice at the top there are two rows of values. The top row lists the condition number. The bottom row is the speed value for each condition. Notice that the current condition, condition 1, is highlighted and is ready to be adjusted. All that we have to do now is press the up or down arrow key to change the speed value for this condition. In this case, let's raise the speed to about 45 since we'll be cutting vinyl, which allows us to have a higher speed. Take note that in changing the blade type, we could press the left arrow key to exit and cancel the new settings. But here in the speed menu, we have to press the 4 key to exit or cancel the new settings. As with changing the blade type, pressing the enter key will accept the new value. Once again, this returns to the condition menu. Next, we can change the force. To do this, just press the 4 key. Here we have the same type of menu that we had for the speed setting. We have the top row listing the condition numbers, and the bottom row which shows us what force is assigned to each condition. Once again, condition 1 is highlighted, so we can press the up arrow key to increase the value to 15, and then press enter to accept the values. The upper right hand corner of the condition menu indicates there are three pages of settings for this particular condition, and that we are on the first page. To navigate to the other pages, we can just press the down or up arrow key. Some of these options will be covered in a later portion of this lesson. 
Now that we've got the condition the way we want, we need to perform a test cut on the material that this condition has been set up for. At the bottom right of the screen, there are two arrows, and next to them are little patterns representing the square with the triangle in them, which is the cut pattern. This indicates that by pressing the left arrow key, the cutter will cut a single square and triangle pattern. And pressing the right arrow key, the cutter will cut three squares and triangle patterns at different force levels. Let's start by cutting a single square and triangle pattern by pressing the left arrow key. It will show this message, which allows us to use the arrow keys to move the tool head to the location where we want the test cut to be. In this case, we can just press enter and the cutter will cut the test pattern in its current location. After it is done cutting the pattern, it will advance the media so that we can access the pattern. Let's press enter again and the media is once again retracted. We'll remove the media and lay it on a flat surface, such as a tabletop, so we can have a better look, although this process can generally be done on the cutter itself. When checking the test cut pattern, we will first see if the material has been cut cleanly. To do this, remove the outside square. It should come up easily without pulling up the triangle. There will be times though, as you see here, that the triangle will tend to lift. Don't be confused into thinking that the force is too low. This could be the nature of the vinyl. What we are really looking for is whether there is difficulty in pulling up the square. If there is, then the force is not high enough. Once the square is removed, then go ahead and remove the triangle. Once it is removed, there should be a solid even scoring of the triangle on the liner. If the score line is not solid and perhaps has a couple gaps, then the force needs to be increased or the speed needs to be reduced. Next, take your hand and place it underneath the liner to the location of the test cut. Apply a little pressure and if it pops through easily, then the force is too high. If either the force or the speed needs to be adjusted, press either the 3 key for speed or the 4 key for force and change the setting. Try only increasing or decreasing the values by 1 and then repeat the test. As mentioned, the right arrow key will cut three patterns. Once this is pressed, this menu appears, allowing us to check force or offset. In most cases, force is the choice. The middle pattern is cut at the current force. The pattern to the left is cut with the current force minus one. And the pattern to the right is cut at the current force plus one. For example, if the force is set to 20, the middle pattern will be cut at force level of 20. The pattern to the left will be cut at the force level of 19. And the pattern to the right will be cut at the force level of 21. These two patterns, both the single copy and the three copies, are an easy way of testing material. What we suggest is that if you're new to the FC8600, Use the second test with the three patterns until you become more familiar with the cutting characteristics of the FC8600. Before we can change the other condition settings to match our cutting materials, we have to know how to switch between conditions. The first way is probably the simplest. When the plotter is in ready mode, hold down the enter key and this little window will automatically pop up. Here's where we can quickly switch to a different cutting condition on the fly. Let's select condition 2 by pressing the 2 key. Once again, to change that condition, click on the condition key. Now we can change that condition setting to a secondary material you may be using. Let's go ahead and change the next condition, condition 3. At this point, we could exit out of here as we did before, return to the main menu, and change to another condition. But notice that within this menu, we can simply press the one key and switch to a different condition without exiting the condition menu altogether. This will open the condition number selection screen. Then, to switch to yet another condition, we can press the up or down arrow key. This will scroll through the different conditions. In this case, we'll switch to condition three. 
press enter, and make the changes to that condition as well. Now that we understand how to adjust a condition, let's go over some of the other condition settings that can be adjusted and consider why we need to adjust them. You may recall that in the upper right hand corner there are three pages of condition settings. Let's press the down arrow key so we can review the second page of settings and explain what each setting is used for. The first item in this window is acceleration. Adjusting the acceleration changes the amount of speed or acceleration it takes for the tool to obtain full speed after the tool turns the corner. Normally default is usually best. If you have an intricate design or if you are cutting thick media, you may want to decrease the acceleration. This way it will avoid pulling up the corners. Cut line pattern, when enabled, will cut perforated lines so that the shapes that are to be cut out completely will not fall out, which could cause skewing issues. There are eight different patterns of perforated lines from zero to seven. Think of it as a dash pattern, but when the tool is raised, it is not completely lifted out of the media, but only the force is reduced for that part of the dash. This leaves little connections along the cut line so that the material stays attached. Assign tool will assign a condition to a tool position. The blade holder can be mounted in two positions, and you can actually assign a condition to one of those tool positions. Remember that the front position places the tool over a channel, which is good for cutting completely through the liner backing for making decals that can be popped out. The back position places the tool over the Teflon mat, which is for normal cutting. The front position is considered tool 3, and the back position is considered tool 1. Tool 2 is assigned to an auxiliary pen holder option. So in this case, we have only position 1 or 3 displaying. Let's press the 3 key. Here is where each condition represented by the row on top is assigned to a tool number. In most cases, tool 1 is used, and we will keep it that way for now. At this point, you've probably noticed that sometimes the 4 key is required to go back to a previous menu. Keep this in mind when working with the different menus. Tangential emulation is a setting used for cutting thicker material. As the cutter comes to a corner, it will slightly lift the blade out of the material, place the blade on the material to position it in the next direction, and then continue cutting in that direction. This prevents the corners from being torn or lifted up. In the tangential emulation menu, several choices are provided. At the top are two rows, the top row being the condition numbers 1 through 8, and the bottom row indicating whether the tangential mode is turned on or turned off for each condition. A dashed line indicates that the tangential feature is turned off for that condition. A 1 or 2 value indicates that it is enabled and which mode is used respectively. The lower half of the menu shows that pressing the 1 key will set the tangential emulation to mode 1. Pressing the 2 key will set the tangential emulation to mode 2. The difference between mode 1 and mode 2 is simple. Mode 1 will overcut on each corner. This is especially needed when cutting the more supple medias such as sandblast rubber. On the other hand, mode 2 does an overcut only at the start and end points of a shape. Mode 2 can be used for media that are not as supple or stretchy. Pressing the 3 key disables tangential emulation mode altogether. Let's exit to go back to the main menu, and press the down arrow key to view the third page of settings. Overcut determines how far to overcut the corners, as in the case of Mode 1, or the start and end point of Mode 2. The initial downforce setting is added for the task of cutting thicker media when additional force is required for the cutter blade to penetrate the media fully. When the initial downforce is increased, it's added to the initial cutting force when the tool comes down to penetrate the material. 
This enables the cutter blade to penetrate the media rapidly, eliminating the chance for an uncut section. Keep in mind that cutting conditions are a great way to set up ideal conditions for each type of material that you have. Once they are set, they can be used not only from the control panel, but they can also be controlled from the software controller as well, as you'll discover in future software lessons.